Michonne's unwelcome arrival at Hilltop shines a little bit of light on our six-year backstory. Henry meets the CW crowd, and the boy's mission to rescue Eugene reveals a dangerous and deadly new enemy. Did, did this show just get scary again? <laughs> we officially meet the Whispers on the mid-season finale of The Walking Dead, Season 9, Episode 8, Evolution. Hey everyone, D here, and welcome to this week's review of The Walking Dead. So, yes, boilers galore are coming up. All right, so, uh, mid-season finale. Always expect these to sort of end with a bang, uh, and this does, by far, uh, an excellent episode overall with some wonderful shots, great scenes, though admittedly a little bit bittersweet at the end as well. Um, so let's jump into the good points, <laughs> the, the, the exciting parts of this episode. Um, and we're really talking about the mission to rescue Eugene. I'm going to get into the rest of the episode and stuff in a little bit, but I want to open up with this. Specifically, uh, that overhead shot of Eugene's little hidden barn where, where he's hiding out. Beautiful setting, beautiful mood, all established with that overhead shot with the, the, the barn and the little bit of darkness and the tiny bits of light and just all of that fog right over the edge and in the fields around it. I mean, just a beautiful, very creepy setting uh, for this entire sequence, and, and this was just a, a marvelous way of just letting us know what we're getting into. Um, going in and finding Eugene, dog, very useful here, uh, uh, and I love how once they sort of get where they are, it's just a little call out, a little scratch, Eugene, are you there? Nothing big, nothing giant. Again, this is, this is an experienced crowd. They know not to make any more noise than they need to. Uh, Eugene looking super creeped, super scared coming out of that hole. And his whole storytelling uh, um, about this herd that's not behaving like a herd, it's come back a couple of times, it's looking for me. Often visuals can really set up a mood. Like I said, in that, that opening little bit here where we saw that, that overhead shot. And yes, we can see scary sequences when the monsters come and the attacks go and everything like that. But often I find that stories, um, character relations in these moments can be the most frightening. Uh, to me, the easiest example of that is Jaws. Sure, it's scary when the shark comes and there's blood and there's biting and stuff. But to me, the creepiest point of that entire film is when the three of them are on board the Orca and they're telling their story and Quint goes into the big story of the uh, USS Annapolis, Indianapolis, um, and the whole bit of him dealing with the sharks then and why he never wears a life jacket. I mean, it's just, it's a small story, but it sets the mood so poignantly. It's so disturbing. And, and I really got that same feeling from Eugene here, just scared out of his mind, talking about this herd that doesn't behave the way a herd does. And it just really, it set the mood for the entire rest of the episode up beautifully. Um, then as we go on and we see that the walkers are coming in, again, also creepy. And this is a great use of fog, is you don't get that distant sight. You don't see anything until it really comes up, uh, right up to you at this point. So uh, I, I thought that, that was beautifully well done. Uh, then as they go into the escape, that they can't get past, the walkers keep popping up. And, and again, the, the fog works for this. Now, the way that these guys are moving, even with a wounded Eugene, they should be able to slightly start outpacing the walkers. But I'm going to forgive that for this episode. In fact, there's a few things that I want to kind of hit on that while overall stuff was handled nicely, 
um, there, there were a few hiccups. Uh, one specifically is Daryl staying to uh, uh, pull the herd away so that Aaron and Jesus can get away with Eugene. Uh, I love there with Dog barking, the little bit of firecrackers throwing out, making a big noise. Uh, also, I loved even just Daryl's little alarm clock earlier bit. Just winds it up, tosses it as a way of distraction. This is an educated way of dealing with herds, and this is the same type of thing. We do need to see that this stuff doesn't work, that there is something different about this herd. Um, but I think sometimes it went a little bit too far. Uh, like I said, when we have uh, Daryl tossing out the, hell, the, the firecrackers and dog barking, and it does start to pull the herd, and then they start turning away and heading back again towards Eugene and Aaron and Jesus. It's good in the sense that it gives us sort of a creepiness level, uh, that, that this is simply behaving not the way that things should. However, even knowing at the end of what's actually happening, what's actually guiding the herd, I still kind of feel like maybe the herd should have split there. I mean, with all of that noise, that should attract the walkers more than just the herd instinct of following the leader. I mean, at the very least, I think maybe it should have split there. Some walkers start going towards the sound, while other ones are sort of following the herd. You know, we're... we're I guess in some ways we're learning about the herd dynamics of walkers and maybe what seems to be more of a stimulus for them. Uh, but that was one moment I was just like, what, why are they following the person in front? Do they have the Scooby Snacks? You got a whisper with a Scooby Snack. Follow me. I have the Scooby Snacks. Follow me. I mean, it's... <laughs> but again... They're setting up a mood, and they overall do this really well. I just I, th I think that there should have been a little bit more dynamic in that sequence. Uh, then when we get to the, uh, the graveyard, again, wonderful use of fog, of hiding things. You don't see anything until it comes right up on you. Just a, a well-done sequence overall. Was creepy, was scary, you didn't know what was around. Uh, you've got Eugene, obviously, holding people back. He can't even get pushed over a wall. Eugene, got to work on that upper body strength a little bit here. At least pull yourself up over the wall. Um, but then we get to the big standoff there at the end. And yes, you expected it. You knew it. It is our scene of the week for this week. And yeah, the, the whole opening sequence with the farm and, and Eugene's story, that was going to be it until we got to this sequence. Because it was just, overall, it was wonderfully handled. We have a reason why they can't go forward. I mean, I think they should have been able to push Eugene over the wall there or something. But okay, the gate can't open up. They don't have time to dig into it. They've got to fight off the walkers. Wonderful little sequence. Always a great fight. Um, and then we get Michonne's arrival at the end was awesome. And even more awesome than that, Magda and the rest of the new group coming in. Why are you here? We're here to earn our keep. I mean, it's perfect. It shows that these are badass characters willing to step into the muck and to get dirty in order to get things done, just to prove themselves. Uh, and I thought that that was, uh, that was just a great, simple sequence. And again, we're seeing the different techniques, the different ways that they're fighting. But they're able to open up, get everyone through. And this is where we get to the good and the bad. Okay? Okay, the good part is uh, the whisper reveal. How Jesus fights them off, and then he's finally going back to, uh, to the gate. And goes to, you know, strikes one, goes to strike the other one, and it ducks, comes up behind, and stabs him. That was probably the best reveal I've seen in this entire series. It was quick, it was simple, but you're expecting one thing, and we see another, and it's fast. Uh, it was just, again, it was just beautifully Done. Really excited with the way that they carried that off. Um, and that, of course, reveals, oh my god, there's something else. And then we get the rest of these looking like walkers now running with knives and weapons and swords and such that the rest of the team has to go in and finish, uh, and finish off. Just a, a perfect 
reveal to a new enemy. Very scary, very effective. The downside I had with that sequence, of course, was why did Jesus walk back in? This is the moment that, that, that you do that is you go ahead, I'll get them off. What? You open the gate. You got three people. You walk through. It's done. There is no holding anyone off so they can squeeze through. Even as he was going back, they were all just on the other side of the gate just staring at him. So, I mean, I found that annoying. Now, I did, I did, look, we did get some great Jesus fighting there. The kicks, that one where he kicks the one and spins around and cuts down on the other. I mean, just, it's a beautiful sequence. Some great choreography going on there. Uh, it just sucks that that's the end of Jesus now. I love that character. He was a blast to watch. He was very interesting. There was a lot of potential up in front of him. And I'm very sad that they killed him. This is what you need a red shirt for. This is where you need just a couple of the other random hilltop guys and have them die. It doesn't have the same emotional impact. And I know that that's what they're going for here. But really, I was just the moment that he was like, you guys go through and steps into the crowd. It's like, oh, he's dead. He's, that's, that's death right there. The minute that you do that, that is death in the walking dead. Um, but, so we lost Jesus, and that's a bummer. But we do get the actual final reveal of the Whispers where they pull off the zombie head and you find the actual regular human body underneath it, uh, which shines onto, again, this, this new, very scary, very unpredictable enemy uh, that we're going to be dealing with um, in the second half of the season. Now, Michonne's arrival at Hilltop, uh, kind of the beginning of the episode, definitely showed that there is a lot of bad blood and bad vibes floating around. Again, we're getting a little bit more of an insight into whatever it is that has happened over the past six years and really has seemed to separate uh, all of the communities. Uh, I was, of course, expecting a little bit more of a, hey, it's Michonne, no, it's okay, it's these guys. Uh, not exactly the greeting that they got. I do have to commend Hilltop for their security. When they have that rider coming up saying, riders are coming and everyone out in the field, everyone outside there, just zoom, ran inside. Perfect, I mean, beautifully done. This is a, this is a smart community here. It knows how to react and respond to any potential threats. Uh, and I really loved Magda <laughs> and Luke and, and the new gang conversing right there was with Miko saying, you know, if I was there, if I was here, I'd have an, uh, I'd have an arrow right up there on top of the walls, just waiting for somebody to, to make a mistake or show themselves. And of course, that's exactly what we see coming over. I thought that was, yeah, perfect. Very nice. A smart group here. Um, but where you might have expected a welcome, hey, it's Michonne, that is definitely not what she gets. Even has to drop all their weapons before being allowed inside. So we still don't know specifically what has happened. Um, and I'm sure that that's more that they're going to be getting into. But definitely feels like some decisions that Michonne had made. Uh, she implies during one of the little story tells that... Um, People aren't, may not have been happy with the choices they made, but they are still alive to be unhappy with her. So something went down for sure, and Michonne made some choices that seemed to have further separated the community. Uh, Carol sort of implies that uh, herself when she gets to connect with Michonne there and talking about the fair. If you could just send a delegation from Alexandria, it would mean so much, which Michonne shoots down. So really, these communities, which we had expected would bond together and have their own individual flavor but come together for mutual strength uh, definitely seems to have not happened uh, for uh, falling apart was it there's uh, hilltop and there's alexandria uh, and there's the kingdom and in between there there's a whole lot of broken world so some stuff definitely went down looks like some choices that michonne had made um, probably a, brew, a, a, a group, probably some untrustworthy people. Maybe it's the remainders of the sanctuary, uh, the rest of the saviors. Maybe it's a different group, but apparently some choices were made that further separated all of these communities. Um, 
which sort of explains in some way why everyone wants this fair to go on uh, uh, the way that they want it to, um, that Aaron and Jesus have been pushing so much to try and get Alexandria to come in to be a part. Now, the only question that I have is, why? <laughs> I mean, Kingdom and, and, Hill, and Hilltop seem to have some communication. I mean, Henry's up there in order to train with, with Earl and blacksmithing. So there's definitely some communication, some, some interaction going on there. What do they need Hillside, f or what do they need Alexandria for? Hilltop's got blacksmithing. They've got certainly some skills, nails and stuff <laughs> that uh, King, the kingdom needs, uh, which was a cute and kind of touching and sad moment at the same time. Look, I got a Ford on my pay. Here's nails. And Carol just about loses it there. You didn't have to do that. That's how desperate the kingdom seems to be, how bad a shape that they're actually in. Um, so why why does Alexandria need to be there? I think that's another question that I have. I can see that Hilltop and Kingdom may be starting to come together. They can build their own fair. And apparently Oceanside is still around. Uh, we haven't heard anything else. This is sort of the first that we've heard for the future is that they are still around, still populated by women. So we got that going. Um, but very curious, again, we need to find out a little bit more of, of what went down and why Michonne is so, I wouldn't say despised, but I almost would um, by everyone else. Uh, even Tara didn't really give her a nice greeting, did she? And Henry, not just at Hilltop to learn back blacksmithing, but also to meet up with the rest of the teenagers in town. Uh, all three of them. Seems to be four, I guess, if you count Enid. Certainly he's... <laughs> Poor Henry. Saw Enid, liked Enid, thought he might go a little bit in that direction, but that little smooch between Eden and Alden, I think that sort of shut the door for him. Certainly opened up his evening's plans, uh, which, of course, led him to our CW crowd, our uh, teenagers of the Walker apocalypse. And... <sighs> Look, I, I, I get that we're getting some personality issues going on, and I kind of like that Addie seems to at least like Henry, or at least dislike the other teens that are there and is maybe intrigued in someone new. Uh, not really sure what to make of this crowd. I mean, one, they seem to have a lot of time on their hands. I mean, you would think that everybody has a job. It seems to imply that. Everyone's got to earn their keep. Everyone's got to have a job. they got to keep busy. There's stuff that has to be done. Why do they have time to just hang out on the walkways and look over at, uh, at Henry and worry about what he's doing or be impressed by his actions or whatever the heck that they're, they're doing up there? It seemed a little bit odd. Uh, now, of course, as all teenage groups, they go outside the wall when things get dark. Not unsurprising there. Definitely has a nice shack set up uh, for their uh, evening hangouts. That, that, that seemed well stocked. Uh, but really, how smart is it for them to have a walker hanging out? I mean, once they got drunk and they're like, oh, you want to see what we do when we're bored? I'm like, oh, please don't tell me they have a walker tied up. So they have a walker tied up somewhere, which is great when you are drunk and your kids to be hanging out at the side of a pit with a walker. Shouldn't they know any better? They haven't been taught well. They haven't been trained well. Uh, at least Henry had the wherewithal to jump in and take them out. I did like that he was drunk in it, though, and wasn't doing it very smoothly. I didn't feel danger for Henry. I just appreciated the fact that they continued that, that he wasn't just jumping down like, ha-ha! But the effects of, what, that one shot? I don't know, maybe that shouldn't have been right. It shouldn't have had that much of an effect on him, not that quickly. Um, I did appreciate his response when the kids were like, why did you do that? If I had to tell you, then you wouldn't understand. That's a very mature response. Uh, and, and certainly was the smartest thing for him to go and take out the walker because that was just a death waiting to happen right there. Um, and you do have to appreciate the irony of him being in the drunk tank um, and Earl coming down, the alcoholic who was last in there after, right after they had built it. So I, I like the sort of interchange between them. 
Uh, Earl being kind of the more knowledgeable parental type figure in this scene, advising, not totally shutting out, but willing to listen if Henry was willing to talk. And the fact that even Henry understands, look, I realize that this is a big deal, that this is super important. I saw my mom cry. Um, and just wanted to get, you know, wanted to not think about that big stress for a moment. Anyway, it was just, it was a nice sequence. While the teenagers annoy the heck out of me, I think Henry is making a good step forward. I think owning up to his mistakes uh, is right. And again, I, I sort of like the irony of Earl, who was drunk in there before, alcoholic, now uh, <laughs> having to deal with Henry in that same circumstance. I think it gives her a little bit more compassion. And that played itself off at the end of the scene, too. And of course, can't wrap this up without talking about Negan doing his best Steve McQueen impression as Hiltz, the cooler king from The Great Escape. If you haven't seen that movie, you should check it out. It's one of my favorite World War II movies of all time, and Steve McQueen is awesome in it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> with the glove and the ball, tung tung catch, tung tung catch, a uh, beautiful sequence. And kind of a nice, uh, what, interesting that you, that Gabriel is trying to help Negan learn uh, meditation as a way to relax. I thought that was cute. I loved all of uh, Negan's response about kind of accepting where he is, knowing that he's never going to get out, but he's got a window, and that's like TV, and I love TV. And the best thing is when people come by and they forget that I'm even here, and then they can real, hear real stuff. I mean, again, this is like the fly on the wall that Negan gets to be at this moment. Um, I love the emotion that Gabriel had responding to Rosita being gone, kind of losing it on Negan for a moment there. Uh, uh, one, it's great for Gabriel, uh, even as Negan is trying to just be a shit, talking about his shit. <clears throat> Sorry for the cursing. Uh, <laughs> that's just Negan being Negan. But I think Gabriel's response, I think his, his, his emotional response, I think that affected Negan. Uh, I think Negan is trying to play his role, uh, but I think he does have a low level of compassion. Certainly, as is acknowledged with Gabriel, that Gabriel was there when Negan was going through all of his dark period. I'm assuming right after we saw him with uh, Maggie, um, and then Maggie finally left, that that was Negan's dark period, and Gabriel was there to help sort of pull him out of it. So I think he does have a certain compassion, certain connection with Gabriel in that sense. I mean, they, they had some stuff in the years earlier, but uh, I really think that that was an honest response from Negan, um, hearing how upset Gabriel was. I think that that did have an effect on him. Uh, and the end, though, Negan escapes. Sort of. Is it escape if the door's not closed? And is this just, did someone forget to lock it? which seems unlikely, or is this just degradation over the years of things just rusting and not working? How long has this cell maybe been open? With just the expectation that Negan thinks that it's locked. I don't know, I had that interesting thought. But I love that just the realization how he loses his ball and thus he has to listen and then with the storm coming in he can hear the little rattle of the gate moving and that sort of told him it's time to go. Um, I was wondering what he was going to do though. Was he just going to grab his ball and go back in just knowing that that's where he was? And I think they played that moment beautifully where he does reach down and pick up the ball and looks at it. And you can see he's thinking, do I just go back? Do I do this? And then toss it over the shoulder and walk out. Just, just a great way to transition this character. Now the real question is, is what is he going to do with this freedom? Is he going to leave? Is he going to come back? And what is the response going to be, A, when people realize that he's gone, and B, when they see him again? Because I don't know if Negan really has anywhere else to go. And maybe he's going to have to find himself as part of this community and find a new way of, of being there. Though, the way Michonne has been acting, that seems less likely. Where would Negan go? All right, just a couple of small things. Uh, one, another great shot 
uh, that they had in this episode was the zoom through the walkers after Daryl and Aaron and Jesus see the walkers milling around and they leave and the camera goes and zooms in through the whole walker crowd uh, until it finally arrives up on the one that sort of turns and, and looks around. Uh, just again, another beautiful bit of camera work right there, really setting a scene, setting a motion, uh, and again, creeping us out just a little bit. Oh, and I didn't say it before, but I do want to point out, I also loved Eugene's whole freak out on the possibility of walkers evolving. That, you know, because again, you can only take out the walkers by destroying the brain. So if the brain is still functional, then it could possibly react and therefore maybe it can remember things. Can it remember language? Can it start to plan? Can it start to strategize? We know ultimately that's not really what's going on. But still, I love that just... Just just Eugene's brain trying to grasp onto the new reality that they're dealing with. I just, I, it, was just, it was a nice moment. And creepy. Punishment for drunk and disorderly conduct and hilltop, two days in the slammer. Well, Michonne did say they needed to have rules. I guess this is one of those rules. Uh, Jesus and Aaron lamenting about what they used to do. Uh, and now, you know, that they the need to kind of almost convincing themselves that they need to go back out into the world. They need to go and meet people again. They need to go return to their times of discovery. Again, it, it's between that and talking about Jesus, you know, taking up his mantle of leadership. He, yeah, that was all insight that Jesus was going to die, wasn't it? But still, I like that idea. I, I think what we've seen is communities that have locked themselves down, pulled away from the world and each other, uh, and that they are going to need to go through another realm of, of, of breaching back out. Because ultimately, that's really what Rick wanted with these communities, right? He wanted them together, hence the whole bridge that then got blown up. Symbolic as well as, you know, in reality. Um, but yeah, I think that's sort of what we're going to be starting to imply, is that these communities that have pulled into themselves really are going to have to start reaching back out to each other and the rest of the world. All right, well, I think we'll go ahead and end this for now. We're going a bit long. Thank you so much for joining me with this review. Uh, so we are now on break until February. So good couple of months uh, break until we return to the back half of the season. Very excited about the whispers now. If this is the tone they are setting up for the back half of the season, I am super excited about that. Uh, now we do have The Gifted still playing right now. I'll probably have just a couple more weeks and they'll probably break for that pretty soon too. So I'll have a chunk of time over, uh, over the Christmas holiday and then ramping back up the reviews next year. I've got to see where everything sort of lays out. We know that uh, Game of Thrones is coming back in April. We've got to see when Legion is coming back plus we have American Gods. There's a lot of things happening. So keep an eye out. I'll get a spring preview coming out uh, uh, probably end of this year, beginning of, of next year, just to sort of let you guys know what else is going on. So that's going to wrap us up. Thank you again for joining me on this review. And if you enjoyed it, you can go ahead and hit that like button. Thoughts, ideas, and comments right down in the section below. I've been really busy lately, so I have been behind and responding to everyone. But... I have a lot of free time on my hands now, so I'll catch up with all of that. Uh, you can always catch me on Twitter and Instagram. I am at Darren Jakes. Please subscribe if you're not. Quick and easy. One button press. You'll catch all of these reviews. You won't want to miss any of them. And we'll throw up a couple of our latest deals right here for you to check out. So, that's it for me. I'm D, and I'm out of here. Catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.